Potlatch. 26 Languages. The Quake Wake Awake Continue. The Practice of Potlatch. Illustrated. Here is Wei Wadit La in Thunderbird. Park, Victoria, BC, a big house. Built by Chief Mungo Martin in 1953. Wealthy, prominent hosts would have a big house specifically for pot latching and for housing guests. For other uses, see pot latch, disambiguation. Not to be confused with pot luck. A pot latch is a gift giving feast practiced by indigenous peoples of the Pacific Northwest coast of Canada and the United States, one, among whom it is traditionally the primary governmental institution, legislative body, and economic system. Clarification needed, too. This includes the Hailed Suck, Hader, Nukuk, Klingit, 3, Maker, Seenshan, 4, Nua Chinulth, 5. Quake Wake Awake, 2, and Coast Salish Cultures. 6. Potlatches are also a common feature of the peoples of the interior and of the subarctic adjoining the northwest coast, although mostly without the elaborate ritual and gift-giving economy of the coastal peoples, see Athabascan potlatch. A potlatch involves giving away or destroying wealth or valuable items in order to demonstrate a leader's wealth and power. Potlatches are also focused on the reaffirmation of family, clan, and international connections, and the human connection with the supernatural world. Potlatch also serves as a strict resource management regime, where coastal peoples discuss, negotiate, and affirm rights to and uses of specific territories and resources. 7, 8, 9. Potlatches often involve music, dancing, singing, storytelling, making speeches, and often joking and games. The honoring of the supernatural and the recitation of oral histories are a central part of many potlatches. From 1885 to 1951, the Government of Canada criminalized potlatches. However, the practice persisted underground despite the risk of government reprisals including mandatory jail sentences of at least two months. The practice has also been studied by many anthropologists. Since the practice was decriminalized in 1951, the potlatch has re-emerged in some communities. In many it is still the bedrock of indigenous governance, as in the Haida Nation which has rooted its democracy in potlatch law. 10, 11. The word comes from the Chinook jargon, meaning to give away or a gift, originally from the newer Chinulth word pie, to make a ceremonial gift in a potlatch. 1. Overview, edit. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Speaker figure, 19th century. Brooklyn Museum, the figure. Represents a speaker at a potlatch. An orator standing. Behind the figure would have. Spoken through its mouth. Announcing the names of arriving guests. A potlatch was held on the occasion of births, deaths, adoptions, weddings, and other major events. Typically the potlatch was practiced more in the winter seasons as historically the warmer months were for procuring wealth for the family, clan, or village, then coming home and sharing that with neighbors and friends. The event was hosted by a new mame, or house, in Quake Wake Awake culture. A new mame was a complex, cognatic kin group usually headed by aristocrats, but including commoners and occasional slaves.
it had about 100 members and several would be grouped together into a nation. The house drew its identity from its ancestral founder, usually a mythical animal who descended to earth and removed his animal mask, thus becoming human. The mask became a family heirloom passed from father to son along with the name of the ancestor himself. This made him the leader of the new Mame, considered the living incarnation of the founder. 12. 192. Only rich people could host a potlatch. Tribal slaves were not allowed to attend a potlatch as a host or a guest. In some instances, it was possible to have multiple hosts at one potlatch ceremony, although when this occurred the hosts generally tended to be from the same family. If a member of a nation had suffered an injury or indignity, hosting a potlatch could help to heal their tarnished reputation, or cover his shame, as anthropologist H. G. Barnett worded it. 13. The Potlatch was the occasion on which titles associated with masks and other objects were fastened onto a new office holder. Two kinds of titles were transferred on these occasions. Firstly, each new MAME had a number of named positions of ranked seats, which gave them a seat at potlatches, transferred within itself. These ranked titles granted rights to hunting fishing and burying territories. 12. 198 Secondly, there were a number of titles that would be passed between new Mama, usually to in-laws, which included feast names that gave one a role in the winter. Ceremonial. 12. 194 Aristocrats felt safe giving these titles to their outmarrying daughter's children because this daughter and her children would later be rejoined with her natal new mame and the titles returned with them. 12. 201 Any one individual might have several seats which allowed them to sit in rank order, according to their title, as the host displayed and distributed wealth and made speeches. Besides the transfer of titles at a potlatch, the event was given weight by the Distribution of other less important objects such as jewel cat blankets, animal skins, later Hudson Bay blankets, and ornamental coppers. It is the distribution of large numbers of Hudson Bay blankets and the destruction of valued coppers that first drew government attention and censure to the potlatch. 12. 205 on occasion. Preserved food was also given as a gift during a potlatch ceremony. Gifts known as stabiks consisted of preserved food that was wrapped in a mat or contained in a storage basket. 14. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Edward Curtis photo of a Quake Quake Awake potlatch with Dancers and singers. Dorothy Johansen describes the dynamic in the potlatch, the host in effect challenged a guest chieftain to exceed him in his power to give away or to destroy goods. If the guest did not return 100% on the gifts received and destroy even more wealth in a bigger and better bonfire, he and his people lost face and so his power was diminished. 15. Hierarchical relations within and between clans, villages, and nations, were observed and reinforced through the distribution or sometimes destruction of wealth, dance performances, and other ceremonies. The status of any given family is raised not by who has the most resources, but by who distributes the most resources. The hosts demonstrate their wealth and prominence through giving away goods. Potlatch ceremonies were also used as coming-of-age rituals. When children were born, 
they would be given their first name at the time of their birth, which was usually associated with the location of their birthplace. About a year later, the child's family would hold a potlatch and give gifts to the guests in attendance on behalf of the child. During this potlatch, the family would give the child their second name. Once the child reached about 12 years of age, they were expected to hold a potlatch of their own by giving out small gifts that they had collected to their family and people, at which point they would be able to receive their third name. 16. For some cultures, such as Quake Quake Awake, elaborate and theatrical dances are performed, reflecting the host's genealogy and cultural wealth. Many of these dances are also sacred. Ceremonies of secret societies like the Hamatsa, or display of family origin from supernatural creatures such as the Dzunyukwa. Chief Owa Xa Lage Lees of the Kwagu L describes the potlatch in his famous speech to anthropologist Franz Bors. We will dance when our laws command us to dance. We will feast when our hearts desire to feast. Do we? Ask the white man, do as the Indian does. No, we do. Not. Why, then, will you ask us, do as the white man does? It is a strict law that bids us to dance. It is a strict law that bids us to distribute our property among our friends and neighbors. It is a good law. Let the white man observe his law we shall observe ours. And now, if you are come to forbid us to dance, begone, if not, you will be welcome to us. 17. Among the various First Nations groups which inhabited the region along the coast, a variety of differences existed in regards to practices relating to the potlatch ceremony. Each nation community and sometimes clan maintained its own way of practicing the potlatch with diverse presentation and meaning. The Tlingit and Kwekirutal nations of the Pacific Northwest, for example, held potlatch ceremonies for different occasions. The Tlingit potlatches occurred for succession, the Explore our developer friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Watercolor by James G. Swan. Depicting the Clallam people of Chief Chetsimoka at Port Townsend, with one of Chetsimoka's wives distributing Potlatch. Granting of tribal titles or land, and funerals. The Quakerutal potlatches, on the other hand, occurred for marriages and incorporating new people into the nation, i.e., the birth of a new member of the nation. 18. The potlatch, as an overarching term, is quite general, since some cultures have many words in their language for various specific types of gatherings. It is important to keep this variation. In mind as most of our detailed knowledge of the potlatch was acquired from the Quake Quake Awake. Around Fort Rupert on Vancouver Island in the period 1849-1925, a period of great social transition in which many aspects of the potlatch became exacerbated in reaction to efforts by the Canadian government to culturally assimilate First Nations communities into the dominant white. Culture. 12. 188208. History. Edit. Prior to European colonization, gifts included storable food. Oolichen, or candlefish, oil or dried food, canoes, slaves, and ornamental coppers among aristocrats, but not resource. Generating assets such as hunting, fishing and burying. Territories. Coppers were sheets of beaten copper, shield-like in appearance, 
they were about two feet long, wider on top. Cruciform frame and schematic face on the top half. None of the copper used was ever of indigenous metal. A copper was considered the equivalent of a slave. They were only ever owned by individual aristocrats, and never by new name, hence could circulate between groups. Coppers began to be produced in large numbers after the colonization of Vancouver Island in 1849 when war and slavery were ended. 12. 206. The arrival of Europeans resulted in the introduction of numerous diseases against which indigenous peoples had no immunity, resulting in a massive population decline. Competition for the Fixed number of potlatch titles grew as commoners began to seek titles from which they had previously been excluded by making their own remote or dubious claims validated by a potlatch. Aristocrats increased the size of their gifts in order to retain their titles and maintain social hierarchy. 19. This resulted in massive inflation in gifting made possible by the introduction of mass produced trade goods in the late 18th and earlier 19th centuries. Archaeological evidence for the potlatching ceremony is suggested from the tilde 1,000-year-old pickup sticks site in interior Alaska. 20. Clingit funerals conducted alongside potlatches usually had a celebratory element to them. 3. Potlatch ban, edit. Main article, Potlatch Ban. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Example of an ornamental. Copper used at a potlatch. Potlatching was made illegal in Canada in 1884 in an amendment to the Indian Act, 21, largely at the urging of Missionaries and government agents who considered it a worse than useless custom that was seen as wasteful, unproductive, and contrary to civilized values of accumulation. 22. The potlatch was seen as a key target in assimilation policies and agendas. Missionary William Duncan wrote in 1875 that the potlatch was by far the most formidable of all obstacles in the way of Indians becoming Christians, or even civilized. 23. Thus in 1884, the Indian Act was revised to include clauses banning the potlatch and making it illegal to practice. Section 3 of the Act read, Every Indian or other person who engages in or assists in celebrating the Indian festival known as the Potlatch or the Indian dance known as the Tamanawas is guilty of a misdemeanor, and shall be liable to imprisonment for a term not more than six nor less than two months in any gaol or other place of confinement, and any Indian or other person who encourages, either directly or indirectly, an Indian or Indians to get up such a festival or dance, or to celebrate the same, or who shall assist in the celebration of same is guilty of a like offence, and shall be liable to the same punishment. 24. In 1888, the anthropologist Franz Bors described the potlatch ban as a failure. The second reason for the discontent among the Indians is a law that was passed, some time ago forbidding the celebrations of festivals. The so-called potlatch of all these tribes hinders the single families from accumulating wealth. It is the great desire of every chief and even of every man to collect a large amount of property and then to give a great potlatch, a feast in which all is distributed among his friends and, if possible, among the neighboring tribes. These feasts are so closely connected with the religious ideas of the 
natives, and regulate their mode of life to such an extent, that the Christian tribes near Victoria have not given them up. Every present received at a potlatch has to be returned at another potlatch, and a man who would not give his feast in due time would be considered as not paying his debts. Therefore the law is not a good one, and cannot be enforced without causing general discontent. Besides, the government is unable to enforce it. The Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. The Potlatch, Quaker Utl, British. Columbia Diorama at the Settlements are so numerous, and the Indian agencies so large, that there is nobody to prevent the Indians doing whatsoever they like. 25. Eventually, when the potlatch law, as it became known, was amended to be more inclusive and address technicalities that had led to dismissals of prosecutions by the court. Legislation included guests who participated in the ceremony. The indigenous people were too large to police and the law too difficult to enforce. Duncan Campbell Scott convinced Parliament to change the offence from criminal to summary, which meant the agents, as justice of the peace, could try a case, convict, and sentence. 26. Even so, except in a few small areas, the law was generally perceived as harsh and untenable. Even the Indian agents employed to enforce the legislation considered it unnecessary to prosecute convinced instead that the potlatch would diminish as younger, educated, and more advanced Indians took over from the older Indians, who clung tenaciously to the custom. 27. Persistence, Edit The potlatch ban was repealed in 1951. 28. Sustaining the customs and culture of their ancestors. Indigenous people now openly hold potlatches to commit to the restoring of their ancestors' ways. Potlatches now occur frequently and increasingly more over the years as families reclaim their birthright. Anthropologist Sergei Khan was invited by the Tlingit nation to attend several potlatch ceremonies between 1980 and 1987 and observed several similarities and differences between traditional and contemporary potlatch ceremonies. Khan notes that there was a language gap during the ceremonies between the older members of the nation and the younger members of the nation, age 50 and younger, due to the fact that most of the younger members of the nation do not speak the Tlingit language. Khan also notes that unlike traditional potlatches, contemporary Tlingit Potlatches are no longer obligatory, resulting in only about 30% of the adult tribal members opting to participate in the ceremonies that Khan attended between 1980 and 1987. Despite these differences, Khan stated that he believed that many of the essential elements and spirit of the traditional potlatch were still present in the contemporary Klingit ceremonies. 29. Anthropological Theory, Edit In his 1925 book The Gift, the French ethnologist Marcel Morse used the term potlatch to refer to a whole set of exchange practices in tribal societies characterized by total prestations, i.e., a system of gift-giving with political, religious, kinship and economic implications. 30. These societies' economies are marked by the competitive exchange of gifts, in which gift givers seek to outgive their competitors so as to capture important political, kinship, and religious roles. Other examples of this explore our developer friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF.
Milwaukee Public Museum potlatch type of gift economy include the killer ring found in the Troprian Islands. 12. 188208. See also, edit. Competitive altruism. Conspicuous consumption. Guy Debord, French situationist writer on the subject of potlatch and commodity reification. Isaac Hotain. Kate Hoga. Koha, a similar concept among the Mori. Killer Ring. List of bibliographical materials on the potlatch. Maka Exchange, a similar concept in Papua New Guinea. Potluck. Potluck is the older term in English, but folk etymology has derived the term potluck. From the Native American custom of potlatch. POW, a gathering whose name is derived from the Narragan set word for spiritual leader. References, edit. 1 Carat A. B. Harkin, Michael E. 2001, Potlatch in Anthropology, International Encyclopedia of the Social and Behavioral Sciences, Neil J. Smolser and Paul B. Baltz, eds, Vol. 17, pp. 11,885-11,889. Oxford. Pergamon Press. 2 Carat A. B. Aldener Jonites. Chiefly Feasts, The Enduring Quaker Util Potlatch University of Washington Press 1991 ISBN 978-0-295-97114-8 3 Carat A. B. Chandanit, Anne, 2013 Alaska's Native Peoples Anchorage, Arctic Circle Enterprises P27. ISBN 978-1-933837-14-7. 4 Carat Segin, Margaret, 1986, Understanding Seenshin Potlatch. In, Native Peoples, The Canadian. Experience, ed. by R. Bruce Morrison and C. Roderick Wilson, pp. 473500. Toronto, McClelland and Stewart. 5 Carat Atlio, Richard. Sayak, A Newer Chinalth World View, UBC Press, New Ed Edition, 28 February. 2005. ISBN 978-0-7748-1085-2. 6 Carat Matthews. Major J.S. 1955. Conversations with Katsilano 1932-1954. pp. 190, 266, 267. Asin B0007 K3902. Retrieved 27 November, 2015. 7 Carat Klutsai, George, May, 1969. Potlatch, 2ED. Victoria, BC, The Morris Printing Company. 8 Carat Davidson, Sarah Florence, 2018. Potlatch as Pedagogy, 1ED. Winnipeg, Manitoba, Portage and Maine. ISBN 978-1-55379-773-9. 9 Carat Swanton, John R., 1905. Contributions to the Ethnologies of the Hader, 2 ed. New York, E. J. Bdill. Leiden, and G. E. Stechert. ISBN 0-404-58105-6. Ten Carat Constitution of the Hayda Nation, PDF. Council of the Hayda Nation. Retrieved the 9th of December, 2019. Eleven Carat Hayda Accord, PDF. Retrieved the 9th of December, 2019.
Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. 12 carat A B C D E F G H Graeber, David, 2001. Toward an anthropological theory of value, the false coin of our own dreams. New York, Palgrave. 13 carat Barnett, H G. 1938. The nature of the potlatch. American anthropologist. 40. 3349358. Do. 10.1525 forward slash AA.1938.40.3.0200.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0
26 carat Aldener Jonites, chiefly feasts, the enduring Quaker Util Potlatch, Seattle, University of Washington. Press, 1991, 159. 27 carat Douglas Cole and I. H. Aiken, an iron hand upon the people, the law against the potlatch on the Northwest Coast, Vancouver and Toronto 1990, Conclusion 28 Carat Gay Dutch, René R. Potlatch The Canadian Encyclopedia Retrieved 27 November 2013 29 Carat Khan, Sergei, 1989 Cohorts, Generations, and Their Culture the Klingit Potlatch in the 1980s. Anthropo, International Review of Anthropology and Linguistics. 84, 30 Carat Godelia, Maurice, 1996. The Enigma of the Gift. Cambridge, UK, Polity Press. pp. 14761. External links. Edit. You missed a museum of potlatch artifacts. Potlatch an exhibition from the Peabody Museum, Harvard University. University of Washington Libraries Digital Collections Oliver S. Van Alinda Photographs A collection of photographs depicting life on Vashon Island, Whidbey Island, Seattle and other. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Communities around Puget Sound, Washington, photographs of Native American activities such as documentation of a potlatch on Whidbey Island. Categories, Native American Religion First Nations Culture History of British Columbia. Coast of British Columbia Ritual Giving Economic Systems Chinook Jargon Coast Salish Culture Eating Parties Masquerade Ceremonies Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF